If things are going well for you in life, you may not believe the title and the topic of this video. You may not believe that the government could possibly be lying to you, be gaslighting you. If you have an amazing job and your circle of friends also have amazing jobs and you were able to get a house at the right time and you're just saving money hand over fist and you're well on your way to a safe and comfortable retirement, you're not gonna believe this message. Also, if you've already retired and you have a million dollars in your account, everything's looking good, your stock portfolio is incredible and you don't have a care in the world. You have your nice house, you have your nice cars, and everything is a perfect utopia for you. You're going to think I'm completely lying and I'm completely making a video full of clickbait. But if you're like the rest of us, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. This idea of the government gaslighting you, lying to you, is way too familiar because it's way too real. This channel is mostly about the difficulties and the challenges of getting a job in the first place. And then when you have one, all the hoops and all the things you have to go through just to maintain and to keep that job. One of the things that the government communicates to us on a monthly basis is the jobs report. And for the past year or so, most months have been pretty positive. They've looked pretty good. In the month of September, we heard, I think it was 254,000 jobs were added. Now, if you're actively in the job market, you could have family, you could have friends, you could have former coworkers who could tell you, look at the jobs report. They created 254,000 jobs. So what's wrong with you? Do you need to get another bachelor's degree? Do you need to get a master's degree? Do you need to level up, skill up? I mean, what's wrong with you that you don't have a job right now? And that has been mostly the narrative that the government is creating tons of jobs, plenty of jobs. And if you don't have a job, I mean, it doesn't make any sense because this economy is booming. This job market is absolutely incredible. And then we get to the month of October. And in October, they tell us that they've only created 12,000 jobs. I mean, that's quite a jump. I mean, that's cause for alarm. Sound the bell, right? But then the government tells you, whoa, 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 we only created 12,000 jobs because of the hurricanes. I mean, this is the first time in the history of the world that there's been hurricanes. And the number of hirings has only gone down also, well, I mean, there were some strikes by Boeing and some other companies that you don't work at, they're not in the same industry, but that's the reason. That's the reason you can't get a tech job. That's the reason you can't get a job in your chosen field is because companies like Boeing are having strikes. It's because areas like Florida and the South have had hurricanes. These things are the first things that ever happened in the history of the world, or at least the history in the US. And that's why we went from 254,000 jobs created to only 12,000 jobs created. And if you're just listening to me in the background, that is where I use air quotes because this is not true. The government wants you to think that they are creating plenty of jobs. And if for some reason there's a month that they're not creating those jobs, it's because of force majeure, acts of God, and, and or because of strikes well, jobs are not being created because people are striking, which really doesn't make any sense to me. You could say more people are gonna get fired because of the strikes, or at least use that as a reasoning. You could say that people are gonna get fired because of the advancements in AI, or at least use that as a reasoning, but that's preventing you from creating jobs? Don't see how that adds up. So when it's convenient and comfortable for the government, and they have a reason, they have a scapegoat, they could say, AI is the reason that people are not getting hired. They could say that hurricanes and strikes are the reasons that these new jobs are not being created. But before those things happen, and when those things are not comfortable for the government metrics and don't fit the narrative, then it's just a matter of 
the economy's strong, you're a loser, you, you suck for not being able to get a job right now. And one can say that it is the government that is lying to them and failing them, or one could describe it as the system. Now, some people will say the system is completely broken. That's why people can't get jobs. That's why people can't get good houses. That's why X, Y, and Z. But to me, the system isn't broken. The system is functioning as designed. I mean, think about it. Since we were kids, or at least teenagers, we were programmed and set up and set on this trajectory to have these corporate jobs. I mean, what was with the structure of our school? You could sit down and you had to do homework, which teaches you that it's normal and it's okay for you to take your work home with you. We had assignments and we had projects that a lot of times we had to do over the weekend, which teaches us the weekend's not even yours. You need to go work and be productive and get the job done over Saturday, over Sunday. We had team building activities of working with other people on class projects, whether it's building a volcano or a other kind of science experiment, or if it's maybe a, a math project or a group essay or a group presentation. It's taught us all the things that we need to do to have a corporate job. And maybe your experience was different, but my experience didn't give me the tools and the mindset of creating your own company, of being good with your finances, of not making critical financial risk at 17, 18 years old. That's gonna change the whole course of your life. That's going to put you in a hole, put you behind when it comes to your finances. We didn't learn investing, we didn't learn <laughs> We learned cursive, but not cursive combined with being able to write checks and make good financial decisions, just cursive for the sake of learning cursive. We didn't learn about investments in the stock market and things that could help us not have to rely on the system so much. We learned how to be corporate workers, how not to complain, stay in line, don't cause too much of a ruckus, raise your hand and wait to be called on. I mean, we were taught and learned about how to be a good corporate America citizen. I mean, look at it, think about it. That's what we were taught. And then when things happen, we hear, oh, it's because of this, it's because of that. I mean, we've been lied to, apparently, our entire lives. And just now, I'm starting to really realize just how bad it's been, just how messed up the system has been. So what I want to tell you today and get through to you is if you're struggling right now, it's not you. The system has failed you. Our government has failed you. And like I said, look at these job reports numbers. Got some numbers right here in front of me. So we talked about the fact that there was 254,000 jobs created in September. And then that was lowered to 12,000 positions. And then previously, we talked about how a couple of months ago, they made a year long job revision, revising the jobs created down to 818,000 or down by 818,000. And that's not normal. That's not okay. If you were an accountant and you were that far off on your numbers, I mean, you'd be fired and potentially sent to jail. I mean, this is serious criminal activity that everyone just passes off as being okay but it's not. And then just looking at uh, the recent, and just looking at a recent article on the New York Times talking about the previous months appear weaker. And it says August and September were revised lower, taking a total of 112,000 jobs off earlier estimates. Just for those two months. The average job growth over the past three months is now 104,000, down from 189,000 over the six months before that. So even when you get numbers, and they already seem way too high, like I say in every video, show me an interview for me, the 254,000 people who were hired. They, it didn't happen. You can post jobs, but we've, <laughs> if we're in the job market, we know what ghost jobs are. I mean, just posting a job that you're never going to hire for, 
even if you go through the motions of interviewing, even if you create a nice job description, all that BS. You're going to get emails that, oh, this position is no longer open. This We've got, decided to go in a different direction with this position, all these kind of things that are not true because they've been lying to you from the start. They never had any intentions of hiring people for these positions. And now, even from those numbers that are already inflated way too high and are not real, they go and revise them even lower, closer to maybe the real jobs that are created, but who knows anymore? I mean, how can you trust data that is so easily changed, so easily manipulated? You just can't. But the government will want you to think that it's you. You're the problem. Look at all these great American jobs that are being created. And you might say, well, come on, man. Uh, businesses have to make money. And if they have to outsource people, if they have to lay off people, I mean, that's what they got to do to make money. But then the overall question is, well, what happens when <laughs> no Americans have good quality jobs anymore? I mean, yes, these companies can cut corners and downsize, but who are they going to sell goods to when the average American doesn't have a good job anymore? when people are going to homelessness or living in cars or moving in with their family and just really scraping just to get by. And then the government will tell you, you're a loser, you're a failure. You've let your friends and your family down when really it's the government that has been gaslighting us and letting us down. Talk to you later.